Hey everybody, I'm Eddie Ray and you're watching my YouTube channel. And in this video, I'm going to show you about winterizing your camper. So you've put together a full camping season this year and now it's time to winterize. Yeah, that's what I gotta do. You know, it's funny, we're in uh, mid-November here. It's actually November 26th and it's supposed to get to 65 degrees today in Middle Tennessee. And you ask me, why in the world are you winterizing your camper? Well, we don't have a four season travel trailer, but we have a travel trailer and we have to winterize it in order to make it through to the next spring. So that's what I show you about and what we're gonna be doing. Oftentimes people are very intimidated by winterizing their camper. I know I was on our first time. Uh, it's a relatively simple process. It doesn't take a lot of time and once you're done, it's done. Now this varies between models, but for us, uh, it really it takes about 30 minutes. And I suggest probably most units would take no more than that, maybe more than an hour. But good grief, it really doesn't take a lot. Uh, there are a few simple tools that you need. Actually, there's only one tool that we need and that's a crescent wrench. Outside of the crescent wrench, we take two gallons of RV antifreeze and uh, we utilize this large trash can right here. Now, you want to know why we use this trash can? I can show you why. We spend lots of money on our campers and trying to get things done, get things done right. And so uh, some of us store our campers under a cover, some of them use a tarp, some use plastic, some have a carport. We use a cover and then we store our cover in this gigantic trash can. So, very simple in the spring. You take off your cover, you roll it up as opposite as you take it off, and then you place it in its cover, and then place it in this trash can. Uh, we also have our tire covers in the trash can, and we store this in our shed. So it's quite easy to do this. Um, you know, storing it in the trash can allows us to keep varmints out of it. It keeps it out of the way. If you put it in your garage or in your house, it can unfold and get large and bulky and cumbersome and take up a lot of space mice can get in it and then they dig holes through it so this is a good way to keep it out of out of harm's way by placing it in a trash can securing a lid over it and covering it up don't let anything in there we store it in our shed it's out of the way we don't even think about it till fall comes along okay so we're at the back of the camper and i talked about that tool that i said i would need Crescent wrench. Okay, so we're going to use the crescent wrench to remove the drain plug out of the uh, water heater. Now, we park this in every time uh, after a camping trip and I drain the water heater. So I know that there's no water in there. There may be some residual water, but likely probably not much. Uh, but it's good to remove the drain plug, open the pressure valve. That way we can get air flowing in there and hopefully that stuff will evaluate because you certainly don't want it to freeze in there uh, and risk cracking your water heater. That's a pretty expensive replacement. So. We'll open this up. Before we do that though, I want to talk about this mesh. Uh, this is a super great thing to use for uh, keeping varmints in like wasps, bugs, anything out of your water heater, out of your refrigerator, and out of your heat vent uh, from your um, heater. Uh, this looks like one eighth inch expanded metal that's been placed and made a screen and then it attaches to these. We got this at our local RV dealer. It's super handy. So, we'll continue on. Open this up and when you do, uh, you've got your pressure valve here and you've got your drain plug here. Uh, so, uh, as you want, what you want to do is relieve the water and let air to circulate through that water heater. What I first do is I relieve my pressure valve. So, simply just stand it open. This gets some air, uh, the pressure off the tank and then the air able to flow inside of the tank. And then I use my crescent wrench, my one tool, uh, over here and start to remove my plug um, so water can drain out or so air can flow through. So I'll start on that and once it's loose enough you should just slide your hand right in there and be able to remove that plug. Not a real big deal. It's not difficult. Uh, it's done. So at that point we can set your plug to the side. Uh, you've got your valve open. Nothing else needs to be messed with in here. Just simply close it back up latch it and it's ready to set for the winter. Okay, the next thing that we need to do is simply fill the water lines with this antifreeze. So our onboard water pump is located under the sink. This is the kitchen sink and that water pump is located under the sink. Uh, so what you do is you'll open up and we'll take a look inside here and acquire the 
the pump to feed the antifreeze or the tube to feed the antifreeze into the water lines. So let's take a look and find our little hose. If you reach down in here, you'll note that we've got uh, this hose here. Okay, this hose connects to our pump. Now on the pump, you have to make sure you get in there and switch the pump from the uh, water tank to the uh, winterizing tube. So you get in there, it's a couple of turn valves, make your change, and then once you do that, you can go in and start pumping your water or your antifreeze through your water lines. Now again, we don't want to use conventional auto antifreeze. We use this soft or safe uh, antifreeze that you can use and it's biodegradable. We make the switch here and then go along and make this switch here. Now one of the things you have to remember to do when you're winterizing your camper um, is deals with the water tank. Now there's a bypass valve where your water tank is. Most of them have it. If you don't, have it added because it's a huge help. You need to go in there and change the flow. That way your water flow bypasses your water heater. You don't need antifreeze in your water heater. You want that to dry out. So make sure that you go through and make trip that bypass valve. It's a matter of three flips, one, two, three, and it changes the direction of the water as it flows. In this case with my camper, it's under the bunk beds. As with the bypass valve, this one, this one, and that one. That changes the flow of our water heater, or the water to the water heater. It shuts it off from the water heater and allows it to recirculate. Also want to check both your drain valves. The drain valves are very important that you make sure you let those close so that water, the antifreeze does not drain out during the winter time. And if you can see the reflection of the hue of the light in my, drain, my, my water lines, you see that it's pink. So I feel confident that there's antifreeze in my water lines. We've switched our fluids from the water tank to the hose. You just simply place your hose inside your antifreeze line, just like so. Now, you come up here and just turn on your pump. Use your water pump. So I'm turning it on. You can hear a little click, and then we start pushing water. You want it to run through all the lines. You want it to run through your water, your main sink, your kitchen sink, and your shower, and your shower spigot. Make sure it runs through all those places. Hot and what? Hot and cold. And this is going to continue to run. I'm going to walk through, and we'll do each one of our lines. I'm going to go ahead and run our bathroom sink. Both sides. I want to go in here and we'll check our toilet. Make sure our toilet's flushing. Every time you do this, you should be able to hear the pump pumping, just as if you were if you were boondocking. And then. So everything is run. We filled a full tank gallon in. I normally do two to fully go through and make sure that we have everything covered. You also want to make sure that you check and put antifreeze in your drains. Pour the antifreeze in your drains and let it drain from the sink or it, you can either dump it in there. One of the two is fine. But make sure that you get the water out of your drain lines. You don't want to set up for your first time camping in the spring and find that you've got frozen drain lines. Another important matter you need to be mindful of when you're winterizing your camper as far as the antifreeze is concerned, uh, be thinking about you've done your kitchen sink, you did your bathroom sink, you did your shower and tub, and you did your bypass for your water heater. There's one other area you need to be mindful of, uh, and that's just the very area of which you uh, hook your garden hose or the, your water hose to your camper. Uh, this camper here has where we put in our water and there's a small screen there. If you'll remove the screen and take and there's a little button in there you can push. When the pump is activated and you push that button it will return right, uh, the antifreeze out this particular side. 
you don't want to trap water from here to the pump or here to any certain line so make sure that you press that button get the return of the antifreeze that way you fully have uh, equipped your camper with the antifreeze protectant okay so i'm on the roof of my jayco now get you a step ladder some way to get up that's safe and you can get up here and walk around do a visual inspection of your camper in all the areas of the floor of the of the roof make sure there are no cracks or anything of that sort that way uh, we don't have any issues in the winter time and when you get to springtime you can either repair them or repair them before you get to springtime and they're already done main things to look for is stuff uh, like around your antenna um, and then around your air unit and around your refrigerator vent and any other vents that you may have these are very important to take a look at. Make sure you see you certainly don't want any water damage. Now comes for the unfolding of the cover. We're gonna unfold it and get the camper covered up just right. And as you can see, with some fastening up, there's not much more to do. One of the last things we have to do is install or put on this tire covers on either side. There are four. Uh, they're great to keep your tires out of the sun. That way they don't dry rot, keeps UV rays off of them. Very simple. Slide them on, hook your strap, and it's done. No issues with that. Now my tires are covered. One of the other things to do, I you go ahead and put down my stabilizers. We have stabilization blocks and I go ahead and crank them down. That way it relieves a little tension off the camper and uh, you release the, the tires and it can sit there and not have as much weight, weight on it. So I go ahead and crank those down and get it stored up as well. Just put enough tension to lift the camper up just a little bit off its axles. So anybody that knows anything about camping uh, and batteries, wintertime is one of the times you want to store your batteries. With that simple wrench, simply remove your battery. Unbutton it or unbolt it, remove it, place it in your garage for storage. And that's how you do it. Only thing more I'd like to do is take and put a bucket. I'm gonna put a bucket over this and that way that can be stored as well. Another important matter you need to be mindful of when you're winterizing your camper as far as the antifreeze is concerned. Uh, be thinking about you've done your kitchen sink, you did your bathroom sink, you did your shower and tub, and you did your bypass for your water heater. There's one other area you need to be mindful of. Uh, and that's just the very area of which you uh, hook your garden hose or the, your water hose to your camper. Uh, this camper here has where we put in our water and there's a small screen there. If you'll remove the screen and take, and there's a little button in there you can push, 
when the pump is activated and you push that button, it will return right, uh, the antifreeze out this particular side. You don't want to trap water from here to the pump or here to any certain line. So make sure that you press that button, get the return of the antifreeze, that way you fully have uh, equipped your camper with the antifreeze protected. So we're back where we started, but we've got a winterized camper. We've been we filled our water lines with the biodegradable, healthy antifreeze, and we've covered our tires, and the camper is prepared to go. We've put our uh, battery in storage. We've hooked it up to a trickle charger to get it built back up to where it needs to be, uh, and done everything that we need to do to prepare ourselves for the late fall and the deep winter to early spring. The camper will be stored here for those months, and hopefully by March. Ash 2018 will begin our next camping trip. I hope to do several things throughout the course of the winter to bring you some videos and some things interesting that we do and try to do as time goes on. Things to keep in mind when you're out here and have your items stored. Uh, we like to make sure that our refrigerator is open, that way it can breathe and doesn't develop any sort of mildew, smell, or anything of that nature. And we also have a vent in the roof of our restroom or bathroom area. The vent has a cover on it and you're able to uh, open it up and let air in and out of the camper. As the time, as the temperatures get warmer throughout the winter or cooler, the camper will expand and contract. In doing that, we need air to come in and out. So that gives it an opportunity to breathe and refresh. So having said that, uh, look forward to uh, having your, seeing your comments. Constructive criticism is the only way I'm gonna learn and uh, make sure you share the video. So until next time, hit the subscribe button and make sure you dream big and live for the moment.